been a minute since I filmed a video for this channel, uh, but I have kind of a special occasion here. It deserves a longer format video than an Instagram reel. So behind me is a 1920s walnut armoire or wardrobe that I was recently gifted uh, through my local Buy Nothing group. If you don't know what a local Buy Nothing group is, it is a group where neighbors in a very localized area uh, give things away to a neighbor who might be able to use it. No money is exchanged, no bartering. Um, it's just freely given and people do ask for things in this group also. I have been the recipient of many wonderful things, mostly like vintage sewing things because you know, not everyone sews these days. So I am that lady who will take <laughs> grandma's old machine or vintage notion. But also I've purged quite a few things. Um, as my kids have gotten older, I've gotten rid of many sports related things that are actually quite expensive and you don't really just want to toss them to the goodwill. You want to see them live a bit longer. So I cannot recommend it enough. If you have one, join. It's a wonderful way to meet your neighbor. We actually have a, a friend uh, through our Buy Nothing group, but anyway, I digress. So this piece was offered up by a neighbor who gave me a little bit of history on it. So the woman who gave this to me mentioned that she was an antique collector before antique collecting was cool. So, you know, I think she said maybe 30 years ago, she purchased this in Savannah, Georgia. They have moved around. They ended up here in the Pacific Northwest. They moved from a much larger house to a smaller house, and this wasn't getting the love that she felt like it deserved. She heard about a local Buy Nothing group and decided to offer it up that way. Actually, my husband tossed my name into the hat and I was the lucky recipient, so thankful for my husband. Not only did he put my name in the hat, but he also uh, did the majority of the moving. It is so perfect for my sewing room. It obviously takes up a huge m amount of space. Definitely uh, keeps me organized and I'm just gonna show you what's inside. We have these really cool doorknobs. Don't know if they're carved or if, I don't know what they are. They're really cool though. They feel like wood, but I'm not 100%. So over here, uh, this is the built-in shelves and I just shoved some of my vintage notions in here. Let's take a look at those. Okay, up top is my So Handy toy sewing machine. I have a little video on that somewhere. I think it's on Instagram actually, so if you wanna see that, go check out my Instagram. Uh, also up here is some vintage papers, um, still in the packaging. I don't know if I'll actually use them. They came in a little grab bag of other things. So just, just kept them here. I don't actually know what this thing is. This was another thing that was in a grab bag. Directions for using your Tacket pattern marker. I'll have to investigate this a little bit further. Okay, and the next shelf are accessories for machines and attachments. This is a recent find. It is a button holder. I just didn't have this pink case, so that's why I picked it up. I didn't really need it, but it was $3, so I grabbed it. And here are some pinking shears. Um, they're a really unique design. Very, very interesting compared to what my regular pinking shears look like. I have a small video about these already on Instagram. Okay, and as far as these go, these are all varying accessories, attachments for different Singer machines. I've only collected Singer brand machines. Actually, that's a lie. I have three Foff machines, but those are my favorite. I like Foff and I like Singer, and each one has like a, you know, cams or special button holder attachments and things like that, so. Here's a peek of what I have, and I have quite a few machines. Some are actually pretty old too. 
Moving on down, so in the back there is a white sewing machine manual and pattern making uh, instructional. Um, one of my father's friends actually sent that to me. It was her grandmother's or great grandmother's. It was so sweet that she thought of me and it I have never seen anything like it and it's very, very cool. Over here is a clapper that I recently got for Christmas and a stack of my vintage magazines. I use these for reference for clothing styles and color coordinations and just to look at the ads because it's fun. Next shelf down are some vintage ribbons and this is a sewing box. So this is where I keep my excess thread. These are usually colors that I just don't use. You never know when you'll need a hot pink thread. Okay, and here are my luscious wools. I, they're pretty heavy, so I felt like they needed some support there. And this is the only built-in drawer. And in here, currently, I do intend to put some patterns in here, but I have my spare iron and um, crayons, random things, you know. All right, so that's the side. Okay, and over here, is the main part. And here is the maker. The interior of the big door has a mirror built in. It is really nice. It does have some age hazing on it. Um, I don't care. <laughs> uh, it will come in handy just for fit checks. I actually checked myself on this dress that I made yesterday. It is beautiful, heavy, and uh, handy. Okay, up top I have some faux furs, velvets, heavier weight uh, fabrics, brocades, velvets, like I said. And look at the storage solution here. These are some hanging baskets that my kids had. I think even my husband had some. Just storing, you know, fabric nicely folded and color coordinated in here and having this little handy dandy pull out i can access my fabrics easily by just yanking them out and over here actually if someone catches this, this these are all vintage bed sheets that i use for muslins when i do make them i'm not really a huge muslin maker um, I try to make them wearable because I just I hate wasting fabric. So why not make it in a pretty sheet? Those just pull out and I have another one over here. Um, cottons, novelties. Uh, I keep my kind of special fabrics separated. Like this check is um, some Italian silk. That is some Japanese wool. That's obviously a part of an obi and I have some velvet over here. It's just wonderful. I'm sure maybe sometime next year, I'll probably come up with something even better, but this, this was so perfect. I got all of my fabrics off the floor and uh, it's nice to look at. And it just pulls out nicely and just real quick up top i was able to display a few things i had to move quite a few of my paintings over here i'll do a full sewing room tour in the near future but it's a great place for my plants some heavy book ends that i had a vintage suitcase that i've had for about 30 years they seem to go pretty well so that's it um I'm pretty excited about it. I have actually been very good to not mess it up in the past few days because I've been waiting to film this. I uh, hope maybe that gave you some ideas on fabric storage. I know that was a huge hurdle for me, was figuring out how to put things away besides just on a shelf because, you know, sometimes that just, when you're pulling them out, it's hard to put everything back <laughs> easily. So, um, Perhaps you might get lucky like I did and find a kind of storage solution like this. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching and joining me on this little tour. Okay, half-assed sewing room tour. Uh, this is this is where the magic happens. Computing. And uh, this beauty.
I do use the tanker dust. Uh, I have an affinity for metal furniture. Oh. Yeah, just a little sneak peek here. This little corner, little magic corner. 